This is my iPhone 15 Pro. It's the first iPhone with a USB-C port, so now with these common converters, I can go ahead and convert from the USB-C on my phone to full-size HDMI out. I wanna show you how you can connect this iPhone or any other camera with an HDMI or an SDI video input source to ProPresenter. Getting video input into ProPresenter 7 is very easy. So here I'm gonna load ProPresenter and I'm gonna to go to ProPresenter settings, inputs. And this is the page where we can select both video and audio input devices into ProPresenter. So later I'm going to show you how to use them. So for now we're going to go ahead and look at this page. So on the left side here I'm going to delete this existing FaceTime camera. So on the left side of this page here there's a section for video inputs and audio inputs. I'm going to create a new video source. It's currently called input one but we can go ahead and rename that. Let's change it to FaceTime camera. Great. Now from this devices drop down we can see all of the different devices that are attached to our computer as local network or the FaceTime camera sources. I'm going to go ahead and select FaceTime camera and then select a resolution and the window that says no video source is where the selected video source is going to show up as a preview showing us the preview of our input. So I don't have any external cameras connected, so I'm going to go ahead and select my FaceTime camera since everyone should have that as a built-in video source. I'm also going to be able to see my iPhone, which is connected to the same network. I should be able to see that as a virtual source. So here I'm going to go ahead and select my iPhone and then change the source over to my iPhone. And there you go. You can now see the iPhone as a source inside of ProPresenter. There is a second tab here, which is the audio tab. I'll put this down. When an input is selected, the audio will also be displayed in that output. So if you don't want audio coming from a specific source, then don't select any audio here. Just keep it set to no audio source. If you're going to be using several cameras and have the main audio source be a connected mixing console, then just leave the audio on the individual channels set to no audio source. Then go ahead and create a new audio source on the left here in the audio tab. So I'll click the audio, create a new audio source in the audio section. And here you can see we're going to have a few more options available to us. The mode feature specifically is the new option available. And this is how we determine how audio inputs are utilized in ProPresenter. Off is off. On is on, meaning the source will always pull audio from the input. Auto off is the one that I always use, and this allows us to use this audio source all the time, except for when a video is playing from ProPresenter 7. Then the audio output will become the source of audio until the video ends. So the idea here is that you're sending audio from the computer to your mixing console, but then it's coming back in at, from the video into ProPresenter and then there's latency as a result. So let's just take the audio from the video that's going out and use that as the stream audio going out. So while you're playing a video like that, if you wanna be able to hear the crowd or any audio coming in from the mixing console, be sure to set it to on and not auto off so that you get audio from the console all the time. So that is the process of getting a video and audio input to ProPresenter 7. So now let's continue by looking at the types of video sources that we can use and how to best utilize them in ProPresenter 7. If we haven't met, welcome to Crazy Amazing Designs. I'm Nathan and I train and educate leaders to do church and event production with excellence. So if you'd like to see more of my videos, click subscribe. And if you have found value in my videos, then go ahead and give this video a like. So back to ProPresenter, let's look at the hardware and some key points that allow us to bring video into ProPresenter. To get video input to ProPresenter, you need a capture card, a local webcam like we used with the FaceTime camera, or a network connection. I already showed you how to do this with the built-in camera as well as the iPhone's webcam feature. To connect a camera output, to input to the computer, you need a capture card. So if you have a camera with an HDMI output or an SDI output, you're gonna need some kind of capture card to convert that signal from those standard video ports to the computer. So this Recorder 3G here has the ability to bring in a video signal. A lot of people think that the HDMI ports on your computer are actually input devices, but they're actually just 
for outputting displays. So if you connect one of these converters to your computer, you can only output displays, not input displays. The capture card converts the HDMI or SDI signal from the camera to the computer. I was able to find a bunch of cheap capture cards online, like on Amazon, but I would really be cautious about purchasing these devices with the specific concerns for longevity, color quality, and video latency in mind. So a quality capture card like this Ultra Studio Recorder 3G from Blackmagic works really well and it connects over this USB-C connection. This device gives us one HDMI or one SDI input. I know it has two on there, but you have to switch between them. It does require the Blackmagic desktop video software to be installed, but once installed, the Recorder 3G will show up as a video source in your computer and in any program and show its video feed. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in to the USB-C port on my computer, and now I will, I have an HDMI cable here. So I'll open up the Blackmagic video app. I should have brought the little tripod. Hmm. Gee, what, were they, what was I recording with this last, the Eclipse? Okay, so now inside of ProPresenter, back on my inputs tab, I'm gonna switch my FaceTime camera, actually it was connected to my phone, Last, I'm gonna go ahead to the devices drop down, and I'm gonna click on the Ultra Studio Recorder 3G as a source. So you can see here that it's coming up as a source, and you can see here the video input in the preview monitor. So like I said, this Recorder 3G has both an HDMI and an SDI input port, but only one can be used at a time to input video. So further, you have to use the desktop video software to switch between the ports. So here I'll go to my applications folder and open up the desktop video. And here we go. So now inside of the software, I can see the Recorder 3G has popped up and I'll just click right here and now I can switch between my input being SDI or HDMI and you can see it comes in and out in the monitor here in ProPresenter. So now I'm gonna go ahead and close ProPresenter and I'm gonna go ahead and open up a program called, actually I'll just leave ProPresenter open. I'm gonna go ahead and open OBS, which stands for Open Broadcast Software. A lot of streamers use this program to live stream different things, and a lot of churches even use it. My recommendation is don't use it unless you have some technical ability, because when finicky issues come up, you're gonna have to deal with them, and it's just a headache. My recommendation is go with either Boxcast or Resi as a streaming platform. So I will go ahead and turn off these two sources and I'm gonna to go to the plus under the sources tab and find the Blackmagic device. And that's, the name's fine. Now I'm gonna go ahead and select the Recorder 3G. What I wanted to show you here is that the video connection, inside of OBS we can change the input source. I'm gonna go ahead and close ProPresenter just in case it's causing some kind of issue with seeing two different devices at once. There we go. So yeah, it doesn't love the whole idea of showing multiple uh, programs on the computer, the input from the Recorder 3G. But there you go, you can see that it shows up and it's really neat inside of the OBS software that they've got a button there so you can select from SDI or HDMI as your input source. So NDI feeds are another way that you can do this to send video streams over the network which can be accessed from other devices. So in ProPresenter, close OBS, go back to ProPresenter, I can set up an NDI feed to come into the computer from another device. So I actually have an app on my phone here. It's an NDI video stream camera for NDI and it basically turns my phone's camera into an NDI push and now I can access it from ProPresenter. So I'll go back to ProPresenter settings, inputs, and now on the video input, I can go ahead and select NDI video, and that is gonna be the NDI connection coming in from my iPhone. So there you go. It's always a good day when you can see the multi-view, right? Fantastic. I'm gonna go ahead and close this and put my phone down. So NDI feeds are really cool, and you can actually use ProPresenter to push NDI over the network to be accessed by another device. So to do that, let's go to screens, configure screens, and now we've got our, this is the page where we have our typical um, main output for the audience, we have our stream output for the stream audience for graphics, and then we have our stage display one, and if you have a second stage display for some reason, stage display two inside of this feed, so the two would be up here, the two would be down here. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new output, a dedicated output to the NDI push. So for 
this computer is not super set up for some reason at the moment. So I'm just gonna create a new stage output. And instead of selecting a physical system display or just adding a placeholder so I can deal with it later, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new NDI. So just go ahead and select a resolution. And now it's gonna push my content out over the network. So now we've configured an NDI push from ProPresenter and it's sending our stage screen one Basically, whatever's happening in this screen here, that's what it's sending. And let's go ahead and change that. Well, you can see it is kind of, so in this screen, you can see we've got a clock and a countdown timer. So let's show that we can push that over the network. So let's go to settings, inputs. And now if I go ahead and select uh, Nathan's MacBook Air NDI2, we can see that this is coming over the network from this computer. So this computer is pushing it over the network and then it's pulling it back down. So at church on our front of house iMac computer, I have a stage display screen dedicated set up to output our stage display screen layout push via NDI. Then in our control room, well, just go ahead and take a look at what we're doing because once we capture it from a different ProPresenter computer, we're able to push it onto our video switcher as an input that we can use anywhere. So here's our control room. We're on a Sunday, you can see church happening out there. So we have a Mac Pro here, and on this computer, we are using ProPresenter, here's the mouse, to bring in our uh, stage display screen. So if I just go up to configure screens, I can bring up the screen, configure page. Actually, that's the wrong place. If I go to preferences, and I go to the inputs tab, you can see the state display is pulling in from this NDI feed off the network. And then you can see we're here viewing the state display. So now we just put it in the main output through the stage down there. And now we can see it in our multi-view. Right there, Aux Pro Presenter is coming in from this computer. Uh, we're just feeding through an HDMI output. We're feeding from here to there. And now we're able to see it on our multi-view. We've got another multi-view over there. And it's really nice in the control room to be able to see that um, that feed that's going to the stage display screens up there, and then it's also on the back wall. So front of house also has it for the lighting person. There's that monitor right there, uh, right beside the lighting console. That's a multi view, so that way they can see what's going on also. So and that's a lot of zooming around, but that's a really cool. Uh, way to utilize the stage display and NDI over the network to pull in that feed to show everybody what's going on. Now that we have video input into ProPresenter, I'm gonna go ahead and rename it FaceTime Camera, and then I'm gonna go ahead and select my FaceTime Camera as my video input because, well, everybody should have that as a video source. So next, I need to create a new video source in the media browser in the bottom left. So uh, the media bin is in the bottom part of ProPresenter, so you can, turn it on and off by toggling the media button in the top kind of middle-ish right side. So with it on, I can now see video inputs in the bottom left and I can either click the big plus add video input or in the bottom left, I can create a video input there. So either way, it's the same thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my input one FaceTime camera. And now we have created a video input into ProPresenter. And now when I click on it, it's gonna go ahead and pop up on the output. So I can't see it because I'm currently monitoring one of my stage screens. So I just click on screen one, Ugh, it's not there. So ProPresenter output layering hierarchy is causing the problem here. The video input source you can see is the very bottom right, which is the very bottom of the layering hierarchy. So if there's anything on top of it, it's going to get in the way potentially of your new input. So what I need to do here is clear the slide and the, the stuff on top of it basically so that we can actually see it. So hi, that's coming from our FaceTime camera that we created the source for. So if you click on the newly created source but don't see any video, then another layer is probably blocking it. Well, congratulations. This is how we take our video inputs and make them useful inside of ProPresenter. If you're going to live stream from ProPresenter 7, I recommend switching your cameras with a dedicated hardware video switcher and then connect the switcher output to ProPresenter. If you have an ATEM switcher, then connect it to your computer via USB-C. And just a side note that this USB-C connection could cause some slight discoloration. So if you're worried about crushing the blacks of your video, or if you have a video switcher without the USB-C webcam feature, then go ahead and use something like this Recorder 3G. These things are absolutely fantastic. 
Or if you have a video switcher without the USB-C webcam feature, then use this Recorder 3G to get the video input into your computer. If you would like to learn more about ATEM switchers, I recently did a couple of videos on the ATEM Mini, and the first video shows how to configure the ATEM Mini to live stream a church service, as well as how I use it here in my YouTube studio. The second video shows how to send graphics from ProPresenter 7 into the ATEM switcher using different techniques, such as chroma key over one HDMI or alpha key over two HDMI connections. If you're hoping to use this technique to show video from ProPresenter on screens, this is not recommended. Latency is gonna be a huge problem through any kind of software platform. That's the nature of allowing software to process video. I recommend to get yourself a dedicated video switcher an ATEM Mini Extreme with its two HDMI outputs or an ATEM 1ME Constellation will both work just fine. And they just released some 4K models at NAB this year. I just watched the announcement video from Blackmagic yesterday. It was really crazy. Thanks so much for watching. If you found value in this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and follow along with future videos. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Who says bye-bye? Ciao. Who says ciao? See you later.